All right, and welcome back to coverage here from Grand Prix Providence. We are underway with Ben Stark on the left-hand side. He has flipped a mountain onto the table. I'm in the booth with Jacob Van Loon, and my name is Marshall Sutcliffe. And uh, it looks like Bruce Cowley starts off with <coughs> an island, and really unfortunate here for Ben Stark, just two mountains. Yeah, and I, it looks like he has mugging in his hand, but uh, it's not going to do anything against Frilled Oculus. He also missed his third land drop, and he has mm -hmm. a, a key rune in hand at least, and he cannot cast it here. A full, a, a dedicated three-color deck with no gates. He's going to lean very hard on the mana fixing provided by those clue stones, so let's see if he can draw it, and he can't. He's got to decide what to discard now. Looks like he yeah. took three from the Frilled Oculus. Yeah, so just getting that Frilled Oculus pumped. Uh, he's got to be reasonably happy about that. He's got to be super stoked, right? I mean, and right now I see he's got a pit fight in hand. He can pump his Oculus and he can pit fight something too if he wants. You know, whatever whatever Ben Stark comes down with his first first creature play is probably going to die. And here's an Opal A Gatekeepers. It's just going to add to the board presence for Bruce. Here's a critical draw step. And it is. It's a forest for Ben Stark. <coughs> so he's going to get to start dumping things from his hand. Now let's see if he's got a creature he can play or if he'd rather just run the key rune out. There it is. So he's got all of his colors now. Yeah. I mean the colors, problem is red, his, hand green, is, uh, his hand is a double spike jester hand and now his opponent has a 2-4 in play. It's just not where you want to be at all. And a 5 drop in the form of adaptive sap draw. That's going to be really good for Bruce as he presumably will be able to take out anything that's left over, though. I think a mugging is in uh, is in hand for. Yeah, nothing like mugging a five drop. He's played a bunch of spells, and he's even going to get an attack in with a spike gesture since it's not doing any reasonable blocking here anyway. So a super productive turn there for Ben Stark. Yeah. Plays three spells in one turn, and limited uh, often is a way to just win. Yeah. Interestingly enough, Bruce uh, Bruce would have very much wanted that hypersonic dragon, so it's pretty good that he uh, he took that away. Was Bruce on his left? Uh, no, Manning was actually on his left. Oh, okay. Uh, <coughs> but it still might have made it to Bruce. Yeah, uh, Bowman was on his right, so Bruce was not too far away. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's see what Bruce can come up with here. He still has the advantage. He can attack for five here if he wants. His opponent's completely tapped out. But he wants to make sure that he keeps on uh, keeping the board development moving in a forward fashion as well. All right, he is going to attack with both, and he's going to pump. So that's five damage coming in. It's going to drop Ben Stark down to eight. And what is the follow-up play for Bruce? This is, a, this is an important one. We know that Ben Stark is going to be casting at least one, maybe two spells next turn. It's just a Murmuring Phantasm, though, this time. That's going to hold off the Spike Jester nicely. Though I do see that Ben Stark has that rubber belt maka in his hand, so if he wants to get by, he can. It's just a question of w what are his priorities here. He's also got the activation on the Golgari key rune that he can throw in front of one of the creatures if he wants. And there's another Spike Jester, and they're both going to come in. That's going to equal three damage coming into Bruce after one of them gets blocked. And here it is, Rubble Belt Maka, and Ben Stark also has left mana up to activate that Golgari key rune, a 2-2 Death Toucher, and that way... Uh, it's really going to blank the attacks of Bruce. I mean, if Bruce wants to trade, hi, you know, probably, well, e e either one is frilled Oculus. He's gonna, he's gonna, it's going to force Bruce to use the mana just to get that trade done and could stunt Bruce's board development potentially here too. Um, Bruce, of course, aware of the situation. I see he's got a Thought Flare in his hand. No, it looks like he's, ooh. All right, so now he's... <laughs> <laughs> There's the clue, st the key rune check there. The wait a minute, what uh, does that yeah. do? Oh, that has got to make touch? sure it's not a clue stone. Yes. Remember, there were, were a pair of Golgari clue stones in the draft, so mm -hmm. it could be something that could be mistaken. And it looks like uh, Bruce has gone for the thought, thought fair, thought flare plan, as uh, he's just passed the turn back. He's he did force Ben to leave a few mana stranded there, but uh, Ben's happy to trade a few mana stranded for no taking zero damage this turn. It's been but a few different decisions here. He's thinking about maybe just uh, reanimating that Rot Farm Skeleton. That's what he discarded off of his, uh, when he missed that land drop. Yeah, a pretty good one to discard if you're going to have to. Yeah, buddy. 
like that one. I actually don't dislike that card at all. Rock, Rock Arm Skeleton? Skeleton? Yeah, you know, I, I was actually talking about talking about it on the podcast uh, recently, and uh, I put it on a list of cards that I would consider sideboarding in. <laughs> it's really yeah. good in certain matchups and really bad in others. And, yeah, uh, if they have five toughness somewhere in their deck, anywhere in their deck, it's pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> or if, if you're not the aggressor. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we're going to see a Thrill Kill Assassin here from Ben Starkey is going to unleash it and just pass the turn back because he doesn't really have any attacks. And there it is. Oh, man. This is one of the best feelings in Magic. Draw, draw Jace off of your Thought Flare. <laughs> And a Beetle Form Mage. Wow, he just threw three spells and a gate. He's got to discard two cards here, but look at that grip. Remember, he still gets his draw step for the turn, too, so. Yeah, and his hand is just a pile of, you know. Just a pile of four awesome. Four toughness creatures, too. He's just. So he's going to be able to kind of go into shields up mode, and drop Jace, and try to get value from that. Wow, did he just. Oh, okay, he, he ditched an Opalate Gatekeepers here. As I guess he doesn't see himself drawing a card off at any time soon, and he's got more potent things to do. At this point, Ben has to be a little, uh, when the first card, <laughs> before it, it, before he's discarding off Thought Flare as a 2-4, when yes. he has two Spike Jesters yes. in play, and he's now tanking over the next yes. card. <laughs> it's got to be like, oh, Because if no. it was a forest, that would be normal, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, okay, yeah, ditch a forest, what's next? But And did he get rid of a gate or something there? He did. Land? He got rid of the gate. Interesting. And he draws yet another spell. This one's a... Disciple of the Old Ways. So let's see what happens. Now, one thing that we have to keep in mind here as well is that Ben Stark is at 8. And Bruce Crowley sitting at a, a pretty nice 14. So Bruce actually, you know, can consider uh, attacking here. He's, he's now much in a much better position to start trading off his creatures for Ben's permanents and or creatures because Bruce just has a grip full of cards where Ben Stark just has one card in hand. But he's going to go with Doorkeeper and Beetle Form Mage, and pass the turn back. So we do see he missed his land drop. So he's he's content with what he has in his hand here. Yeah. And uh, he doesn't feel like he needs any more lands for basically the rest of the game. And I don't blame him. I mean, he, yeah. he even has Jace. <coughs> yeah. He's going to be drawing cards off of Jace next turn. Here comes Thrill Kill Assassin. And Bruce just says, yeah, sure. Take two. All right, there's a homing lightning in hand for Ben Stark, so Ben doubly disappointed that that uh, Opole Gatekeepers hit the bin and didn't come down on defense. It could have been a huge tempo and card advantage play for Ben had yep. he been able to get two creatures. Yeah. Ben has done a good job of st stabilizing here, though. He's facing down a pretty nice army as it currently sits, so that Beetle Form Mage representing a two-turn clock in the air where the Golgari key rune just isn't going to do anything. So that last turn, a big one for Bruce. Is that a Golgari charm he has in his hand? What I'm is that? I'm not sure. It looks Maybe like it's a clue stone or something. I think it's a clue stone. All right, well, we're going to lead things off with homing lightning on Beetle Form Mage. So there goes that clock. And Ben just, he just has to do this while his opponent Bruce is tapped out. Sure, it's tempting to try to make Bruce use up two of his five mana. We know that he missed a land drop last turn, maybe stunned his board development a little bit. But you open yourself up to all types of things like Dispel, Simic Charm, Mizium oh, yeah. Skin, just too much. Any pump spell, basically. It's just a little too much to, uh, to risk, so Ben just has to take it out on his turn. Don't want to be greedy at this point when you're sitting at eight and that thing represents two turn clock. And at this point, I think there's a, uh, what is that gold card in Bruce's hand? Can, you, can we see what that is? Can't quite see it right now. All right, so here's an attack. And Bruce is gonna pump the frilled Oculus and he's also gonna pit fight <coughs> the Spike Jester that did not block, apparently. And, wow, Savage Surge indeed. That is going to make that pit fight into a kill my Opal, Opal Lake Gatekeepers, and it becomes a two-for-one in Ben's favor there. Yeah. That was a huge turnaround. Oh, these were double blocking. All right, so he's still going to end up getting to kill both of them. <coughs> the pit fight. 
The pit, so it, it, yeah. it, the pit fight helped that, but still. It was still a two for three in Ben's favor. Yes. All right, what does Ben have in his hand? A couple of clue stones, I think. Yeah, there's a Golgari key rune, and here comes the rot farm skeleton <coughs> back from the dead. He's got Bruce down to 10 here. And yeah, now, uh, Oh, that's a Rourke Thar, the unbowed in Bruce's hand. Is that too. what he has? Yeah. Jeez, that'll that'll slam the door right here, basically. Uh, Bruce Kelly does have to be careful, though. Remember, Ben Stark has five power of key runes to accompany the six power he's got in his creatures on the board. So Bruce has just got to be careful that if he does go for something big here, that he doesn't just get cracked back and immediately killed. He can uh, he can play Jace if he wants. Yeah, I think just playing Jace and yeah. going upstairs with this. Yeah, just pretty just good play. Jace isn't too bad. It shrinks down the uh, rot farm skeleton so that the doorkeeper can block it. It also leaves. Oh, here here comes an attack though. Nope, disciple of the old ways getting in there. That's going to put Ben Stark down to six. Yeah, I guess putting him to six and then playing Urkthar is pretty good. It he is has two good. guys that can't block and play, right? Yeah. <coughs> He does have two guys that can't block, but he also has the uh, the Golgari clue stone, a key rune here, which which can trade or attack a, as he sees fit here. <laughs> it does mean that Ben can't play non-creature spells though, as it'll just instantly kill him if that were to happen. <laughs> All right, here's the land. Let's see what Ben has in store for this turn here. We know the Thrill Kill Assassin's going to attack. Yeah, so he can only play creatures at this point. That's right. And he's got a sewer shambler that was in the graveyard that got milled away with the rot farm skeleton. He's going to put it onto the rot farm skeleton, and he's going to attack with both of his creatures here. So that is six power from the rot farm skeleton to accompany the two power from thrill kill assassin. And uh, you got to respect that. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. We just saw a chump come from the doorkeeper. Uh huh. The rot farm skeleton. Take the other damage. But that would put Ben Stark in a pretty good position, right? Yeah. Rurikthar must attack. He must he gets, attack. He gets blocked by the Golgari key rune. They both die. Yeah. Ben I mean, Ben played damage. this game beautifully. Yeah, he's <laughs> he has maneuvered himself. He, he stumbled early on mana. He was able to come back, but he's fighting through opponent that was ahead on board, then resolved flot Thought Flare. And, you know, has, has has put himself in a position here where, I mean, he hasn't even cast Jace yet. He's still got that trick in his pocket as well. All right, so th there it is, the doorkeeper jumping in front. Of the rot farm skeleton, and uh, we see Bruce Cowley take two damage. Okay, there's a battering crisis in hand for Bruce. We know he's got a Jace and he's got one other card. What is that? The Verdant Haven? What was that? All right, both are going to attack, and here comes the block on Rurikthar. And two damage is going to get through to bring Ben Stark down to four. But Ben has lethal damage on the table here, exactly lethal. So we know that Bruce needs to add something to the board. Yeah, oh, Bruce has a, plenty It's to a add. charger. It's a scab charger. Yeah, he can play... Uh, his Battering Crisis and Sky Plan Charger this turn. That's right. Or he can play Battering Crisis and Jace also. He's going to lead off with Jace, Architect of Thought. One of a few Planeswalkers we've seen here this weekend in Limited. Yeah. Okay, so it looks like he plus one to Jace and then played the Battering Crisis. There's a dice, so Jace should be at five here. A surprisingly close game going down here. Absolutely. I, it really did feel like Bruce was, was very far ahead, but we've seen uh, 
We've seen Ben start grind out value thanks to the Rot Farm Skeleton that he had to discard after missing the land drop, and thanks to Sewer Shambler getting a couple of counters here and there. He's gotten value out of his key runes. Trading for a Rurik Thar. You, gotta, you can't really ask much more of a Golgari key rune than that. Yeah, I mean, that's about the best case scenario. Fixed his mana early and then transitioned into a removal spell for what at that point was the best card that Bruce Kelly had played yeah. as far in the match. Remember, Ben Stark also has a Gruul key rune back there that can become a 3-2 trampler if he, uh, if he sees an opening. <coughs> These rug decks, they always seem to do it. Okay, everything's attacking. Remember, <coughs> the Rot Farm Skeleton and the, uh, the Thrill Kill Assassin can't block anyway, so those are kind of always going to come into the red zone here. But mm -hmm. the, the Gruul Key Rune is also going to attack. Uh, I don't know if he's attacking Jace or if he's attacking Bruce. I would assume with Bruce at 8, he's going to attack Bruce. I mean, I there's 5 counters too. on the Jace. And I would assume that too, yeah. Now, he's going to chump block with the Battering Craces here, it looks like. Which would mean that he's going to take 5, or, uh, uh, excuse me, 3 damage. Yeah, and then that seems fine. I mean... Is there a spell? What is that? Just a Kieran. So, yeah, uh, oh, Bruce, Bruce has the Centaur... So he can just blood rush and win. He can. I, I believe that the Ben Sark has no cards in hand, so. Huh. Does he not see it, or is he just, because you, you, oh, and this is why you wouldn't want to do this, right? You don't want to show your opponent that you've got plasma capture, right? Yeah. If, you, if you've got the win in hand? Or oh, Ben has a card in hand. So oh, Ben actually. does have a card in hand? He has one, so. Oh, okay. I didn't so this one. way he actually has counter protection for his. Where's Ben's card? See that the one that was turned down? No, no, he just drew that. Oh, really? Yeah, he didn't oh, okay. have anything in his hand. I don't think. Oh, then I don't know. Yeah, he's just kind of showing his opponent a plasma cap. I think he's just like, good. hey, check this out. <laughs> I mean, it's a nice card. It's a really nice card. Yeah. It's especially nice if you have Rurik Thar and Jace in your deck. Yes, it's also nice if your opponent doesn't know that you have it. It's a little better. Yeah. But <laughs> all right. So Bruce Cowley, Christopher Manny, and Kevin Bowman all pick up game one versus. One of the super teams out here, Martin Yuza, Shuhei Nakamura, and Ben Stark. So a great start for these guys. Both teams, actually, excuse me, one team at 11-1, and one, that's the Yuza Nakamura Stark team, and they're playing <coughs> against 10-1-1, one, and one, Bowman, Manning, and Cowley. All right, so here we are watching Chris Manning as he faces off against Shuhei Nakamura. Chris Manning with what looks to be a bank control deck. Up a game now. It looks like we're watching a game that's post beck and call. Blind obedience comes down. Now, is Chris Manning, he's the one you said he's kind of the mad genius, right? So good at magic. Okay. Yeah, and <coughs> limited especially. This is. You don't want to play against Chris Manning in a limited event. He's going to pay the extort cost from Blight Obedience there for his uh, three drop. And <coughs> Shuhei has that woodlock crawler that I talked about with Nate Price earlier. There's a Viscopa Confessor and one of the better cards now in the full block, Prophetic Prism. It is just the grease yes. that <laughs> greases the wheels for so many decks. It just opens up the door for you to cast so many spells. The amount of Prophetic Prisms that are taken second and third pick is pretty startling. It is. I, the card is just so good now. The format slowed a little bit. I mean, there's still fast decks available, but it's overall not quite as quick as it once was. Gives you a little more time to, to take a turn to cast a Prophetic Prism. It's looking like Manning, Bowman, and Cowley are, uh, they started out with a sweep for game one. 1-1-1 one, one, one on their side of the table. Yep. Players Doesn't mean anything yet. There's not a lot going on here. I wonder if Shuhei was helping out somebody else. Uh. 
Yeah, Shuhei is uh, going over all of the, his available options here. The Crace Incubation sitting there on a uh, Sarich Tiger. There's a... Oh, wow. And it looks like that was it. Chris Manning just too far ahead with his bird tokens. Any extort spell could equal five there. And remember, any creatures and artifacts that uh, Shuhei would have cast there came into play tapped anyway. Yeah, so Manning picks up the first match here. And remember, it's actually it's it's the first third of a match because it's not a match win yet. Yeah. <coughs> All right, where are we at here? There it's we like go. We're on Martin Musa uh, and Kevin Bowman. Judge Simon, Simon, Judge Simon, Simon. looks like he has a fairly land-heavy hand here. But I do see some, some nice ones. Uh, there's a Keating Apparition to start. Pretty good card. Great utility to drop. And there's a Boros Mastiff on Kevin's side. Right, three different colors, and wow, there's a trigger from Viachino First Blade, and boom, attack you for six. That's pretty good. Just like that, you could be facing down six damage, and it looks like he's uh, just going to trade off that Boros Mastiff for a Keening Apparition. I mean, he's got to be happy about that trade just in general. Yeah. Uh, Especially depending on what's in his hand, right? Yeah, they're, uh... Oh, just a clue stone, though. On turn three for Kevin, although no hasty follow-up here for Martin Yuzi. He's still going to... Ooh, he doesn't get to develop his board at all, it looks like. And Maybe now he where he wants to be. Well, he does have an Angelic Edict for whatever Pullman happens to play this yeah, turn. Yeah, he just doesn't have that much pressure, right? And there it is. Towering Thunderfist has arrived on the scene and is probably going to need to be Edict here. I think that there was a... Is, it's either a War Leader's Helix or a Foundry Champion there for Martin Yuzi. Is that a, oh, that is a smite? Yeah, it looks like you might try to get value out of that now. Nope, he's going to stay aggressive. And he's just going to Angelic Edict the 5 drop. Trade your 5 mana for my 5 mana and, you're gonna, and he's going to attack. Yeah, I mean, at this point, Juza looks to have another two lands in his hand. He's just getting pretty flooded here. Bowman, uh, with an Annihilating Fire now in his hand, can just get rid of that first blade and then start taking the game over with the rest of that full grip that he's looking at. Nor there were... Uh, A lot of cards pass in this draft. It's fu it's strange that uh, we're looking at so many black red drafters when the spike jesters were going around so so yeah. late. Yeah. But I I mean that's a pretty big nature of the beast is uh, hooking people. Yep. And the, there the it players is. that uh, the players that the super team are playing against those people are they're all about team drafting. That's all they do. Yep. Like, these are guys who draft in New York very regularly. And when they draft in New York, they're not drafting, you know, a a little, um, you know, an eight man or a Magic Online draft. They're they're three v three with yeah. their friends. All right, we got to get you updated here because there was a big play there. Martin Yuza just played Foundry Champion just as a beat down. He, he did one damage to Kevin Bowman, and Kevin took the opportunity while <coughs> Martin was tapped out to homing lightning. He had that one window of opportunity, and he took it. And there's a Kingpin's pet for Martin Yuza. So Martin, pretty bummed out, would have liked to have uh, kept that Foundry Champion on us. It's really tough to deal with in combat. Oh, yeah. I mean, the thing gets so huge in the front and the back. Yeah, he can make it a 6-6 six -six if he wanted. And there's a Blaze Commando that's going to attack in. And we have a block and a presumed Smite incoming with Extort. Yep. There's the Smite and there's the Extort. Does Kevin have any burn spells he can use? No. Rootborn defenses. Wow. 
Wow, that's a nice one. Um, it's not going to get him a, an extra token or anything, but it is going to mean that the smite goes away and the kingpin's pet goes away here. It's still a nice little two for one there, yeah, for Kevin Bowman. Can't complain with can't complain about that one. So nothing going right for Martin Yuzi here. He plays a Rakto Strike to try to keep the pressure up, but he is going to start taking five damage a, a hit here. Which, thankfully for Martin, thanks to that one extort trigger, is actually not a four-turn clock. It's five. Yeah, so, I mean, as long as Martin can apply more pressure and Kevin is unable to further advance his board state, then, I mean, the race could really go either way here. Yeah. A pretty close game. Martin would have very much liked to have two for one disappointed with that Foundry champion, but... But he decided Side not to, to get be aggressive. Greedy. Yeah, he's mm -hmm. like, look, I'm just going to run this thing out here and make a threat that's really hard to deal with and make him deal with it. it. He happened to have an answer, but they don't always. <laughs> There's a batter horn, so that's going to change the clock significantly here. We know that Recto Strike is coming in either way, though, because it's got a counter on it. It can't block. Yeah, I mean, you might as well get the two damage. It's free. That's right. And again, just have to pass a turn for Martin. It looks like he's flooding out here. Does he have three lands in hand? It looks like he's, kind he's of got doing a Kibler impersonation over there. Yeah, it, I think he does have eight, three lands in hand, so he's on nothing. Could Meanwhile, Kevin nine damage. just all right. Yeah, that batter horn helps a lot now. Kevin's just got a big advantage on board. And it just looks to get further advanced as Martin continues to uh, draw lands. Wow, Whoa. Spark Trooper now. 5915. Yeah, enough to put Juice at 1. Put Juice at 1, especially if he has nothing in hand, which we think he has nothing in hand. It also makes the race essentially impossible on Martin's side. Yeah, yeah Kevin's going to gain a healthy 7 life. This could or be six it. life, rather. This could be, you know, Kevin is looking at winning this game. That would be the match as we see that Christopher Manning has already done it. And <laughs> yeah. a little pump fake there for Martin Yuza. And look at this. Kevin even says, look, still had all these, man. I've got an Udvara Hellkite and... He's got to be careful about doing that, party. man. They have to play against each other again. He has to play against his teammates. Hmm. But, I mean, that's another thing is you shouldn't be showing your cards to your opponents and... Uh, We've yeah. seen a little bit of that, and, and you know,